Uh, so hi, welcome to the Good Noise Podcast. We're here with Sean from uh, Sean Nolan and the Heartmakers. We're going to ask him some questions. I'm going to start. Uh, what inspired you to start the band? Um, well, I've been I've been doing it kind of since I was a kid. So I, um, you know, it's like I've always been in bands. I've always uh, worked on music. Um, it had been a few years since I'd been in a band, and it was really bothering me. So I got my friends together and decided to do it again. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So why are you the heart makers? Because usually I hear, like, the heart breakers. So what started that? Well, it's because uh, <clears throat> we're big Tom Petty fans. Okay, I figured, oh. yeah. So <laughs> so, so uh, we just figured we'd play with the title a little bit. I like hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so how did, like, what was your thought process when you came up with the album name? Um, I, uh, I name every record and this is our third, um, everyone's named after a collection of Ray Bradbury short stories that I find, um, kind of matches the, the feel and the mood of whatever songs we're writing at the time. And the machineries of joy resonated with me just because it's it's sort of like a like a journey. You know, it's not it's not that we're, you know, flooding your ears with joy. It's more of like an exploration as to how does joy work. So like the machineries of it taking it apart. Okay. 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 That's really cool. So, That's pretty yeah, I like cool. that. So what band's influences do you think you can hear the most in the album? Uh, I, I grew up, um, really listening to a lot of, like, 90s punk, like, West Coast punk, and, and then it moved into, like, a lot of, like, emo-type stuff, and then later I got into, you know, more classic rock and roll and things, um, but I'd say biggest influences that I can't quite get away from are probably bands like Saves the Day, um, I really like Against Me. Okay. Things like that, just like a f punk, but with some folk influence. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Um. So, what song took the longest to write? The the longest to write was uh, probably "Or the Whale," mm -hmm. um, and the reason it took the longest to write is because it's an idea I had in college, which I was in college a hundred and fifty years ago. Um. <laughs> And I, I, had, I had read Moby Dick, and I w was really moved by it. So I had written a song called Or the Whale back then. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I would rework it, and I would just change verses. I would change the – even the, um, the chord progressions would be different. Mm -hmm. And then a couple years ago, I just decided I still really liked the idea of having a song like that. So I took kind of like some of the bones from that, and then I rewrote all the music, and I wrote a new verse. So that – if you boil it down, it took like ten years Damn. to write. Just like the like the journey of it. I yeah. wasn't actively writing it, but you know, yeah. from conception to final. Yeah, thing. that's cool though. Awesome. Yeah. So, did you write the opening and closing tracks to be the opening and closing tracks, or were you just how did you figure out that those would be uh, those? We kind of we played around with it. So after um, after we finished recording and after we got the mastered tracks back, even before it was mastered, I was um, I would listen to them and we we like me and the rest of the guys would try to figure out which order flowed the best. Mm -hmm. And you know you know I just try to think about about it like telling a story. So you want like peaks and valleys. You don't want necessarily all the quieter songs to be together or all like the harder songs to be together. You kind of want to keep the listener interested so yeah definitely. Okay. i like the way that the the uh, album opened up with that 15 second like opener track mm -hmm. i thought that was a cool way to dive right in um definitely. oh thanks yep. yeah it captures your attention like right away agreed yeah, yeah. It caught cool cool yeah um so do you think you'll be releasing any new music videos do you have any ideas for them i know like with the current state of the world it's hard to get together you said music but... vid videos yeah I know. Um, yeah, right now it's right now we're just kind of working on. Um, 
Wait, did you say videos? You cut out a little bit. Yeah, music videos. Um, for this release, probably not. Um, we're we're working on writing new material, and we we started recording another record before all this happened. So, um, kind of just focused on writing new songs okay. right now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Good. So, what three songs are you most excited about playing live when quarantine ends? From probably, I mean, the first the first track, Velveteen Sleeves, is a lot of fun because. Um, my brother Kyle, he does the synthesizer stuff, and he also kind of crafted and built those um, interesting, the two little interlude things. Um, so it's fun because we do that live. Mm -hmm. So it's fun if you hear like the opening track and then it goes into Velveteen Sleeves. It's it's really fun. It's kind of a good way to start a set. Um, that's probably my favorite live it's also one of the more dynamic songs where the verses get quiet and then the choruses build and mm -hmm. it ends with um my friend chris is a great lead guitar player and it ends with him his guitar solo which i it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. um and isabel dubs is a, is like the one of the acoustic songs wider one it's always fun to a lot of of our, our friend and it's kind of an emotional track so that's pretty fun too okay um so we're going to shift away from music for the last couple questions uh if you were on death row okay. what would your last meal be and why um if i were on death row my last meal would be um there's a restaurant by me in brooklyn called little mo's mm -hmm. so shout out oh. to them hopefully they come back uh, but they have a, um, like a catfish rice bowl with pickled vegetables. And there was a period of time where I ate that like every day. It's oh, fried shit. catfish and vegetables and rice. Okay. And, um, I, I would just have that. I don't know. It's my favorite meal, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a drink? I hope I don't end up on death row. Yeah. 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 Let's hope like you get to eat that. <laughs> let's meal hope again, that doesn't not, happen. Like, on those circumstances. Yeah. We can hope. Yeah. 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 Cool. All right. So, if you could live in one fictional world for a week, where would you live? One fictional world for a week. I mean, it'd have to be Middle Earth. Okay. You know, oh, like I'd have, I'd have to live. I'd have to live with the hobbits. I mean, I connect with them yeah. on so many levels. I'd eat some cheese. I'd have like six breakfasts. It'd mm -hmm. be amazing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I like you have that. Not that answer. Yeah. Yeah. That is Six, it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, and for our last question, some say it's the most important question. What's your favorite color? Green. Okay. Green. I, I didn't think about that. Actually, I think you know. I guess so. I mean. Now that I think about it, I'd say purple, but purple? maybe it's green after all. I, I don't know. That was my first word. So, yeah, yeah I guess maybe green. Any specific yeah. shade of those two colors then? Because you can't hear yeah, it. I mean, anything fluorescent. Okay. I'm a sucker for the fluorescent. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so that's all the questions we have. Is there anything you want to plug? Um, just this record. I mean, we've got this one, and then there's one. There's an EP before it called R is for Rocket that I think we're all really proud of also that I don't think we pushed that much when it came out. Um, but, yeah, this new and Machineries of Joy, I, I think, you know, we're all really proud of it, and hopefully people will listen to it and enjoy it. So. All right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for sitting down with us. Uh, this has been Sean from Sean Nolan and the Heartmakers, and uh, we're the Good Noise Podcast.